we're blender style and we like noise so today we're talking about the mighty mighty boss tones more noise and other disturbances released in 1992. cheers, cheers gentlemen cheers. i, I like want to know We've all talked about Ska at some point. Yeah. Everybody knows about Ska, and it was just inevitable that we would, one of us would, I would hope one day pick a Ska album. Is this our first Ska album? I think it I is. I think it this is, This is yeah. definitely. Good pick for <clears throat> the first Ska album. Why yeah, did you pick this Mighty Mighty Boss Tones album? Because it's kind of like, it might be my favorite. It might be my favorite. It's their second album. Um... I really love that it has. This is what I like the, about the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. They're punk, they're hardcore, and they're ska. Like, they, they are got the, pretty they're crazy. They're pretty mix. good riffs and stuff. They can get heavy at times. They're fast, and those horns are like, I mean, I don't know. They, they throw killer. a lot of energy in them. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. The energy is very high in this. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it sure. is heavy, and I think. What's crazy is like this is pretty accessible. Like I can play this around anyone. Mm -hmm. But Dickie Barrett's vocals are like damn near death metal. Not really, but you know what I mean. He's yeah. just like one of my comments on this was the vocals on this are crazy. Not the style you would think. They're almost like that bluesy like uh, smoker's voice thing going on, uh -huh. but with a high energy. And he's almost. just shouting oh, at the top so of his good. lungs, just like right below what would be too much. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's great. Um, so good. And then the horns, like like Nathan said earlier, the horns add so much energy to this and they really kind of carry it. Um, um, and it adds drama. Like Yeah, for sure. Like and there's like, an emotion to this. For sure. And it's like, it takes you on a journey and it's wacky. Were you familiar with Mighty Mighty Boston so, before this? Except for like the singles, we all know yeah, the impression I, I that say, you get. And I want to say Chris was kind of into the Mighty Mighty Boston's at the time, but I don't remember. I know somebody we hung out with at the time was, um, but I never got into them. They weren't really my thing, and you know I was more of that I don't want to listen to anything like that's on the radio kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, coming back to this and, and actually giving it a chance, I was kind of surprised on on how good it actually was. Uh, real so quick, I want to real quick. I want to mention. So this was their second album, yeah. and it was like a big hit on the college radio at the time, and right, that's I what eventually that got them signed to this. And this is their last release on an independent label. After this, they kind of went mainstream. I mean, they started in '83. Uh huh. So let's let's because let's bring this up because you were like you you didn't listen to stuff that was kind of you know big. You know, you mm -hmm. kind of shied away from it. And people that weren't really around, let's you know, they might be like they'll look at this album and be like what this was around like ska was a big thing at one point well, you know me and Matt know the like guy who invented ska. 90s. <laughs> yeah we had a friend that used to lie about everything including yeah. inventing ska yeah he invented ska and skanking <laughs> we're pretty sure he did not so this is sure he did. of course he didn't uh so this is like <laughs> even considered like third wave like ska you know you know? Really? Yeah, they're like the pioneers of it. I think you. Uh, but there was like waves of ska before this, before '92. Yeah, dude, you got like, you know, ska obviously originates from you know reggae, and uh, so you had like the two tone. You had uh, like there's yeah, it's all. I like never the actually sub. put that together, but it makes a lot of sense now. You could kind of hear the underlying themes and stuff in it. Yeah, yeah so it's like, like the up these up guys and stuff. These guys were definitely into like you know the. British, like, you know, the Madness, uh, the Selectors, the Specials, like, that's who they were influenced by. But then also at the same time, like, SSD Control, which is like, you know, like a, like a legendary, like, hardcore, like, straight edge hardcore band. Um, they influenced this band. I would say, uh, just... so Dickie Barrett is like a staple within, like, Boston... Mm -hmm. like hardcore and stuff like okay. that's like so he kind of came and, from that underground scene yeah for sure okay okay for sure which makes a lot of sense because like like we were saying like the vocal style is kind of more towards like akin to a hardcore kind of tone even uh, the riffage i mean like i even hear suicidal at times so that's <laughs> fast as fuck some so, of this is so there's fast. some really cool like one of my things is i put that there's some really cool guitar riffs but i also think that like the guitars push so far back you don't notice it unless you're like really paying attention to it mm -hmm. um which is kind of like one of my 
things that bugs me about it because I kind of wish the guitar on. There's like two songs that I really think it was. Um, so um, what's at stake in I'll Drink to That? I feel like the guitar riffs on that, those two songs are really good. I'll Drink good, to That is, yeah. and, But they're pushed so far back that they kind of they kind of get like lost in the mix or whatever. But overall, it's, it's really crazy how they do it. And there's a lot of like um, polka influences to it. Uh, in it as well mm -hmm. like a lot of polka beats and stuff which i thought was kind of cool that it's i like never caught on to yeah. Stuff, yeah which i thought was really cool and the drumming's pretty killer on this too the drum tone on this sounds great there's like eight people that play on this and yeah. i don't think that counts the guy that dances around you mean seizure mm -hmm. support yeah, so there's this urban myth when I was growing up. It was like, that guy's there in case uh, Dickie Barrett has a seizure and they'll help him. Yeah. I'd never heard that until you said it earlier, but that just it's kind of crazy because that's the kind of shit we would believe when we were kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. again, like that guy you yeah, were saying yeah. was lying about everything. That's one of them. Um, and that guy's still pulling his weight more than some of the guys in Slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> what I actually really like about this is... Uh, is the lyrics also because like like if you really listen to these lyrics this is a guy that is thinking all the time oh yeah you know what i mean like even like you know where did you go like you know love that song like how he goes through like you know turn the you know like how he just goes through all these different things you know right. there's, there's a lot, lot of nuances yeah, yeah it's yeah, really cool it, uh also in other things i feel like he's like kind of like a deep thinker maybe i'm looking into it a he little too much shit. yeah no, i tend I, to agree dude i listened to some interviews when he was like in the 90s which are hard to watch because i think he was drunk and stuff but i got i kind of get that sense that's awesome yeah <laughs> boston boy huh yeah i guess so yeah, he was he was drinking a lot of sam adams <laughs> that's funny uh i i just love how this I really wish I could have seen this era of them live. And like, uh, also there's a, uh, they did a benefit show that was recorded and it's on YouTube. You could look it up just like the My My Boston's live. And it's kind of like something that was probably like, I don't know, like four years ago. And I put it on and my son digs it. You know what I mean? Cause mm -hmm. like, it's just a good time and everybody is just having a it's good time. It's just good music. They sound dude. good. They're good musicians. Uh, but I really love the energy of this. Uh, and it's a good energy record. that's not like overly goofy. It's fun and like quirky, but it's not like I, I still take it seriously. Yeah, I yeah, think exactly. it's like the boys being boys, too. Like, you know, I like when these guys like got together, like to play. I'm sure it was like in a fucking way too many of them in a small room. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, and, and, like, and drinking beers, and smoking cigarettes. Suits. <laughs> I really love the like I said, I really love the energy in this. But like, you know, recorded wise, like, you know, there are some faults in it. Mm -hmm. But besides that, like, I think that's kind of somewhat the charm. But like, is there any like negatives that you can I have no with? beefs. I have like two beefs. And one is kind of like what you touched on the recording of it. And I don't know if it's just because it was an independent release or what. I feel like, like I mentioned earlier, I feel like the guitars are pushed back too far on a couple songs. But that's other fair. than that, it's not like a huge negative it's just something mm -hmm. that it's more of a oh i wish i could hear that better without paying a lot of attention but at the same time i don't know if that would distract from the rest of the music because i feel like a lot of this is is the beat and the horns and stuff I also, and that's what carries the energy i also think the horns are probably pretty heavy too because uh, like i said like uh, i mean like they're obviously not the first to do it right yeah but i think uh they were kind of when they there was no big wave of ska when they were doing this. So when they came out with this, mm -hmm. uh, they were making a statement like, hey, we're a fucking punk band, but we're up here with fucking brass instruments. Hey, we're like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we're here to party. And they're in the videos, like, very prominently and stuff. It's definitely, like, and I love that about it. Yeah, for I, sure. I think that's a highlight is the horns. Yeah, yeah, I love that it... Okay, sorry. No, no, that's fine. And, and then at the same time, I feel like the more popular songs, like Where Did You Go, mm -hmm. are kind of falters on this album to me i disagree completely i, feel I like, love that i song. feel like the big band like awfully quiet um dr d dr, dr. d is um, great all drank to that those are like the the songs that really like put that big brass over the top ska like funk plaid feeling kind of to it <laughs> where the the slower kind of radio friendly pop songs 
were the ones that I was like, eh. And I don't know if that's just because those were the ones that were played on the radio all the time, but I feel like they're kind of a disconnect from the rest of the album to me. This, mm. Yeah, but this band was, especially this album, wasn't overplayed on the radio. No, it wasn't, but that's not, there was like two or three songs that were overplayed. Their album that came out a couple albums after this one mm-hmm. with uh, uh, the impression that I get. There's some good tracks um, on this. Oh, yeah, okay. It's a decent album. It's not better than this one, I don't think. Okay. And, but that song is hella overplayed. That song was overplayed. I feel like that song and then the Where Did You Go was kind of played like crazy on the radio at the same time, um, which was off this album. Um, and that is like, that's the big disconnect on this album for me. Uh, with that said, I still think it's a good album. It's fun. I give it a 3.5. I thought it was nice. fun. Uh, the, the pacing throughout the whole album is really good. Uh, some of the parts could use a bit of like remix or readjust them on a level, but uh, overall, I think it's a fun album. And I was actually surprised because I never listened to one of their full albums before. I thought they were all just radio friendly hits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that was kind of my impression that mm-hmm. I got going into it. Did was, you ever knock on wood? Uh, I did, and because uh, that was like the only thing I really knew going into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And like I picked up. Uh, uh, where'd you go recently? Like I just threw it on a playlist. I was like, oh, I fucking love this song, but I didn't listen to the album. So when you picked it, I was like, oh, cool. I'll get to experience the whole thing. I give it a 3.7 out of five, dude. Oh, nice. Uh, I have no beef with it. I think it's a real fun album. I'll listen to this a bunch. I think yeah. this is a great band. I listened to a handful of their other albums and I like this one the best. So yeah. you saying it's like their best, I'm probably not going to disagree with you. And at 30 minutes, dude, to just put it on, like yeah, everyone could, likes listening to it. Through it yeah, and that's the thing. Nobody's going to complain that this is on if you're at a party. Yeah, it's fucking awesome, dude. Good good music. Nathan, yeah. your pick, Mighty Mighty Boston's. So just to reply, I think some of the recording, like how you bring that up, uh, I think that's the charm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I all. I have to say that this band is underrated and that people should go listen to the Mighty Mighty Boston's. Um, I give it a 4.5. Nice. I think it's a great record. Um, it's a lot of fun. And uh, they kind of started another like kind of subculture, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I know that Ska kind of gets poked fun at and like is a meme and stuff now and on Saturday Night Live and shit like that. <laughs> Uh, but there's some of us that have always liked ska and fucking love the influences that come from the reggae side. And we love the influences of, you know, it also going into other punk rock and stuff, you know. I like ska because it is more musical. Mm-hmm. Like there, it's closer to classical music than regular punk rock is. You know what I mean? So it kind of ties into that. Some of the players that play horns in ska bands also play like classical music yeah. or blues and things like that. Or they sit in on like an Imperial Triumphant album. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. the band Voodoo Glow Skulls. Love like, Voodoo Glow Skulls. Too. Yeah, like uh, you know, uh, band Super Geek Fast. Mafia. Yeah, the album where you like the kids like walking home with the, you know, like the trombone or whatever. That's rad. But you're like. Yeah, dude, fucking good pick, man. Yeah. yeah. We are Blender Silent. That was the Miami Miami Boss Tones. More noise and other disturbances. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Oh, he did it. <laughs>